Hello everyone. Welcome back to this short tutorial from Pathology Made Simple at ilopathology.com. This is the part 3 of ovarian tumor series and the continuation of the ovarian surface epithelial tumors which I had started in the previous part, right? So, if you remember the classification, what we uh, learned in the last uh, two sessions were the ovarian tumors are classified into surface epithelial tumors, germ cell tumors, sex cord stromal tumors, metastatic tumors and miscellaneous tumors, right? So, in the previous uh, uh, session, I had discussed about the serous and mucinous tumors of ovary. So, what we will be discussing today is the other three that is endometrioid tumor, clear cell tumors and transitional cell tumors. Remember, all these tumors, all the surface epithelial tumors are further classified as benign, borderline and malignant tumors. So, we look into the types and morphology of endometrioid, clear cell and transitional cell tumors. And in general, we will discuss the clinical features of surface epithelial tumors as a whole. And then we look into a bit about treatment and prognosis and a note on prevention of surface epithelial tumors or ovarian cancers. After knowing the serous and mucinous tumors, the third uh, important surface epithelial tumor is the endometrioid tumors which means these are the tumors which contain glands that resemble that of normal endometrial glands. Okay, so that's just an illustration of endometrium and myometrium. That's a myometrium. These are the endometrial glands. The tumors, the endometrioid tumors resemble that of endometrial glands, tumors containing endometrial type of glands. So, you, again, I told you, no, it, it has benign, borderline as well as malignant category. But then the benign and borderline uh, endometrial tumors of ovary are extremely rare. Endometrial carcinoma is common among endometrial tumors and that accounts for approximately 10 to 15 percent of all ovarian cancers. That means 10 to 15 percent of all surface epithelial carcinomas. Of these, you know, of the endometrial carcinomas diagnosed, 15-30% are associated with endometrial carcinoma. So, it is always said that the ovarian tumor can be a metastatic deposit from the endometrial carcinoma, right? Again, around 15-20% of endometrial carcinomas are associated with endometriosis, okay? So, it's always important to know that whenever you come across a case of endometrial carcinoma of the ovary, Look for evidence of any endometrial pathology in the uterus or it could be associated with endometriosis. Now, understanding the molecular pathogenesis of endometrioid carcinoma, it follows the similar kind of pathway as we studied in endometrial carcinoma. That is, it could be alterations that increase PI3K or AKT pathway signaling or mutations in the mismatch DNA repair genes. Okay. And these alterations could be mutations in P10 gene, PIK3CA and ARID1A and KRAS mutations. So, these are the molecular uh, pathway or mechanisms for endometrioid carcinomas. Morphologically, you know, grossly these tumors can be of variable size. It could be solid and cystic. 40% of the times, you know, these are bilateral. Microscopically, as I told you, these are the tumors which contain glands resembling that of endometrial glands, okay? So, usually endometrioid uh, carcinomas of ovary are of low-grade tumors. In this uh, illustration or in this, you know, microphotograph, you can see that the tumor is composed of, you know, glandular elements which resemble that of endometrial glands, you know, irregularly, you know, irregular uh, glands. But then, usually these are low-grade tumors. Now, the next important Epithelial tumor of ovary is clear cell tumor. As the name says, these are the tumors which are composed of very large epithelial cells which contain abundant clear cytoplasm, right? And that resembles that of hypersecretory gestational endometrium. So, these are the clear cells, you know, they are large cells, polygonal cells, centrally placed nucleus and then abundant clear cytoplasm. So, again, you should remember that all tumors among epithelial, uh, surface epithelial tumors are categorized into benign, borderline and malignant, right? Just like endometrioid tumor, benign and borderline clear cell tumors are extremely rare. So, 99% of clear cell tumors of ovary are clear cell carcinomas. 
right and they are also associated with endometriosis or endometrial carcinoma and that is the reason why these clear cell tumors are now thought to be as a variant of endometrioid carcinoma and not a separate entity right that is why i have discussed this along with endometrioid carcinoma Moving on to the last variety of ovarian surface epithelial tumors, these are transitional cell tumors or Brenner tumors and these contain the neoplastic epithelials of these tumors are the ones which resemble that of normal urothelium. So, that's a normal transitional epithelium. So, this is a urothelium or transitional epithelium. Right? Majority of the transitional cell tumors or Brenner tumors are benign, unlike endometrioid and clear cell tumors where majority were malignant. Right, So, majority of transitional cell tumors are benign and they are often detected incidentally and even when large, they behave, they behave in a very benign fashion. But in case, if these tumors, that is transitional cell tumors are malignant, they are almost always high-grade tumors because they are advanced carcinomas and they are the ones which present with advanced stage of disease. Remember, if transitional cell tumors are malignant, they almost always present as advanced stage cancers. Now, grossly, these are the tumors which can vary in size. It could be as small as 1 cm in diameter and could be as large as 30 cm in diameter and majority of the transitional cell tumors are unilateral tumors. Microscopically, very classically, you know, it has the epithelial elements and the stromal elements. This is a fibrous stroma and that resembles that of a normal stroma of the ovary, right? And the second one is the epithelialness and these are the ones which resemble that of normal urothelium, okay? I have just showed you the normal urothelium, right? So, that's how this particular epithelialness resembles. Among, apart from these two features, in the center of these epithelialness, you can find mucinous glands. So, one important feature of the Brenner tumor is that the constituent cells, you know, they often have longitudinal nuclear growth. If you can appreciate in this magnification, this is a higher magnification of one of the Brenner tumor where you can see these longitudinal groove, these dark, you know, line what you are seeing in the nucleus is the longitudinal groove. And these grooves resemble that of a characteristic coffee bean nuclei and this is called as coffee bean nuclei of Brenner tumor of ovary. Even though you find this coffee bean type of nuclei, you should note that this is a very non-specific finding. Moving on to understanding the clinical features of surface epithelial tumor in general or as a whole. So, how do these patients manifest? Majority of the times, you know, they might, they will be asymptomatic, especially if these are benign tumors. If at all, they are symptomatic and the symptoms is because of, you know, the symptoms can be lower abdominal pain or abdominal enlargement depending upon the size of the tumor. Right? And you can, the patient can develop symptoms because of compression of these large tumors, compression of the adjacent structures by these large tumors and the compression symptoms could be gastrointestinal complaints, urinary frequency and dysuria. If the tumors are malignant, you know, all malignant surface epithelial tumors, they present with features of malignancy that is progressive weakness, weight loss and cachexia, ascites, if it is if it is if it has already spread beyond the ovary these patients can manifest with ascites let's look into important concept whether tumor markers are useful in diagnosis of surface epithelial tumors okay if we consider serious ovarian tumors most of the serious ovarian tumors that is 80 percent of the cases of serious ovarian tumors release this particular tumor marker ca125 but note that these you know, this ca125 is not released by any other epithelial derived cancers. Okay. The mucinous does not release, the endometrioid does not release, or the transitional does not release. Only it is released by the serous ovarian tumors. Okay. And CA125 has a very low sensitivity and specificity. You know, it can be increased in other conditions as well. That is why it has a low sensitivity and specificity in predicting malignancy. And so these tests cannot be used as a screening test. 
if at all you want to consider some test as a screening test it should be very sensitive as well as specific when are these serum markers useful when are these tumor markers are useful only when we, you, you I have a known case of serous carcinoma. That is when these CA125 you know, tests are useful in monitoring these patients who have been treated for an epithelial or ovarian serous carcinoma. Now, how do you treat ovarian epithelial tumors if they are benign? They are easily resected and can be cured. If malignancy, of course, it will be poor prognosis, especially if the tumor crosses midline to reach the other ovary or the tumor spreads into other parts of the body that is metastatic deposits elsewhere. So they have poor prognosis. So can you prevent epithelial ovarian tumors, ovarian epithelial tumors? Yes, you can prevent only when you can screen the patients for high risk women. Who are all the women who are high risk? The, one, the ones who have positive for BRCA gene mutations okay? or the patients who have a very strong family history of ovarian carcinomas. So, these are high-risk women and whenever you identify these high-risk women, these are, I mean, these patients are subjected for salpingo oophorectomy. and once that is done, it significantly reduces the risk of development of ovarian cancers. That's all about today's session the last two sessions we have discussed the entire surface epithelial tumors of ovary in this session we talked about endometrioid clear cell transitional cell tumors as well as understanding the concepts of the clinical features the treatment and prognosis and a bit about prevention of ovarian cancers in the next session i'll be discussing the germ cell tumors of ovary so stay tuned if you have liked this video hit the like button do comment if you have any queries to ask don't forget to subscribe if you find this video useful and then please do share if you find this video useful. Thank you.